Welcome back to Solo Adventures! My name is Livy, and I'm here yet again with another BGG Solitaire PNP contest review. So today the game we're going to be looking at is Root Finder Transcontinental, a game about flying a plane in dangerous circumstances from one side of the world to the other. So a quick disclaimer, about halfway through filming this game, I, I wasn't aware of it at the time because the camera is actually positioned over my head when I'm filming, but the sunlight came in through the window a bit too strongly and the glare kind of blocks off the sheet. I've left the footage in if you want to hear me talk, uh, even though you can't really see what I've written down. I really apologize for that, but I hope that up to the point where I played you got a good idea of how this game works. So without any further ado, let's venture forth. So let's get set up for Root Finder. Um, our goal is to fly from London over here, to Melbourne, down here. And it's the early 1900s, so airplane technology is still in its infancy, and we are attempting to prove that we can make this flight. There's a few different routes that you can take in this game, but the normal difficulty level is London to Melbourne. In order to make this flight, though, we're going to have to have a plane, and in order to have a plane, we will have to have some sponsors. So we're going to roll eight different sponsors. And in this case, the blue is the 10, and the red is the 1. So 21, 51, 44, 21, already got him so we can roll again, 45, 61, 41 11 So of these eight different benefactors that we rolled, we can select four of them. And some of them have different requirements, like for example, if you choose a newspaper, maybe they won't sponsor you if you also are sponsored by another newspaper, and they all offer different amounts of money. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got the British Army, we can get 4,000 pounds, and free recovery at all land or amphibious runway cities. That's good. Sir Finknadl. Permanent 42 damage can be repaired and you get 1,000 pounds. Lady Pismith would give us 16,000 pounds, but we're not allowed to have any other sponsor if we pick her. Taxon Oil PLC. No money, but we get free refueling at all stops. And I can't work for any other oil company. Berman Engineering. We get a fuselage uh, for free, a particularly nice one. A Raja would give us 8,000 pounds, but we have to go through Agra. Public subscription, I'm not really sure what that is, but uh, that's 4,000 pounds. And Royal Navy, we could get 3,000 pounds and the landing gear floats for free. Um, and free recovery at all water or amphibious runway cities. However, uh, we can't have both the army and the navy at the same time. So let's see what we have here. So I think free refueling at all stops is probably pretty good. I don't know if it's worth it though. So let's pick the Raja, and then the route also has to go through Agra. So where is that? Here. It's okay. Let's pick the army. Free recovery at all land or amphibious runway cities. Two more. How about public subscription, and Sir Finknoddle, which only gives us the thousand pounds, but we can reverse permanent fortitude damage, so that's cool. All right.
right, so let's fill out our starting stats. And we also have to build our airplane. So we have a certain amount of money that we start with. In this case, we have four, five, nine, 17 grand. 17,000 pounds. So our basic um, statistics for being one person is we have our, our fuel is zero. Fortitude is four. And the finance gives us nothing additional. Now we have to build a plane. So we have to choose one component in every uh, of every type. I think there's seven different types of parts. So like you, you can't have a plane without a fuel tank, so you have to pick at least one. Ah, I think I definitely want fuel tank eight because a lot of fuel is very good. And I want engine three, which is water cooled which is a good engine that gives me a bonus of two. So I've already got a, I've already got a fuel capacity of 10. Let's make our plane amphibious so it can land on land and water. Let's do fuselage three, which gives us a fortitude bonus of two. And let's do flying controls one, instruments one, and how about the cantilever monoplane? So we have all this money to spend, but we don't want to spend all of it because we're going to need it for repairs and recovery and things like that along the way. So let's add up all of the cost of uh, these plane parts. That is a grand total of 12,000 pounds. So let me just track that. As for our bonuses, our fuel capacity is 8 uh, plus 2, so that's 10, 11. Our maximum fuel capacity is 11, which is really good. Fortitude bonus of plus 2 and plus 2. So we get a plus 4 to our fortitude. And this leaves us with a grand total of eight. So um, when we start the flight, we have 5,000 pounds. We have a fortitude of eight and a fuel of 11. So starting out from London on our trip to Melbourne, we start with a fully repaired plane that is full of fuel. And now we're gonna want to try to plan what route we want to take. So these little numbers here represent the difficulty of the flight. So this is how much fuel it will take and how much fortitude we're gonna need. So we know we're gonna have to go to Agra. So let's plan accordingly. We'll fly maybe London to Paris, Paris to Cairo. We'll do Cairo to Djibouti, to Karachi, to Agra, Calcutta, Rangoon, then we'll do Singapore to Batavia, to Darwin, and then finally Melbourne. So I believe that we're allowed to change our route if we need to. This is just my, my tentative schedule. So we start from London. Our first stop is Paris, so that's a difficulty of two. So at the start of the leg, we're going to have to go two stages, and that's the number. Uh, stage is the same as the difficulty number. 11 fuel, 8 fortitude, 5,000 in finance. And now we have to roll for events that happen while we fly. 65. So we rolled 65, that means we have dirt in our fuel. So unless we have an engine 3, we are forced to land. Thankfully, we did buy the best engine but the repairs will cost 500 pounds and it will take two days to repair. So that'll 
subtract 500 pounds, and that will add plus two days. So we had a difficulty of two, um, so that means that we have minus two fuel and minus two fortitude. Now we roll for the city. Six, six. It says that the city council supports my flight, so the city provides free recovery to city if needed. Um, recovery to city. I, I think that means that if I need to spend a day overnight here to increase my fortitude, then I can get that for free. I also get free repairs to the damage from my last leg, which is fantastic. So I don't have to worry about that. And a free refueling for my next leg. So this is all awesome. So by the end of the leg, we have still a total of 11 and a fortitude of 8 because we stayed overnight. And we have still a finance of 5,000. Um, we have an additional plus two days to do the repairs and we spend one day recovering in Paris. So that means that we have spent three days on our journey so far. So now we're going to go from Paris to Cairo. So that's going to be six. So it's going to be six stages or it's a difficulty of six for this leg. And the fuel we have is 11. Our fortitude is eight. We have 5,000 pounds. So let's see what happens on our way to Cairo. One, one, so 11. We have good navigation, fortitude plus two for next leg. So that's very good. We get a plus two at the start of the next leg. And nothing bad happens, which is maybe the best part. Now we roll for the city. And in Cairo, what happens? In Cairo, we have 32. So that means hidden obstruction rips off landing gear. Oh no. Unless your fuselage is three, written off. And written off means your plane is damaged beyond repair. So I forget what we checked for our fuselage. Yep, our fuselage is three. So we're very, very lucky in this case. However, we still have a permanent damage of minus three fuel. So that is not good. So that means our capacity is permanently reduced by three. So we started with 11 fuel and we had to spend six. So that means we have five left. And I'm not sure if this is also damage to the fuel on top of it. I think that's just to our capacity. So let's say we have five now. And we're gonna have to refuel. So it costs 50 pounds per stage, basically. So now that we're in Cairo, we're going to try to get to Djibouti. So that is going to be six legs. So we're going to want at least um, six units of fuel if we can get it. Our current maximum is now nine. So that's uh, 200 pounds to refuel. So thankfully, we will also... Um, begin with nine. That's good. But we have to subtract this, so we have only 4,800 pounds left. And we recover all of our fortitude by sleeping. So that takes an additional day. All right, so Cairo to Djibouti. Let's see what we can do. So that's six. Let's see what our flight result is. 32. Cracks and fuselage longerons. I don't have any idea what that is. Cracks and fuselage longerons. Unless your fuselage is two or more, then you are forced to land. And our fuselage is very good, so we don't have to land, thankfully. But the repairs will cost a uh, thousand pounds, and there's a permanent damage to our fuel. A one. We had a bonus to our fortitude, but it 
doesn't matter because we managed to do this just fine. Now let's roll and see what happens in the city. 12. Arranged accommodation is not available. Pay 500 pounds for suitable airplane and crew facilities. Okay. That's minus 500. Our next leg is from Djibouti to Karachi, so we're going to need at least uh, six fuel. At the end of the leg, we have only three. So we need at least three more fuel. So we have $3,300 left. And then I guess we also should refuel. Let's go um, up to max, but now we have a minus one to our fuel for it's it's permanent. So our ma new maximum is now eight. So we will buy five units of fuel, and that's two hundred and fifty pounds. So our final final um, result is three thousand and fifty pounds. So now let's fly to Karachi. This is going to be another six-stage flight. We start with eight fuel. Our fortitude is normal, so it's eight. And we have 3,000 pounds and 3,050 pounds. Let's see how our flight goes. 62. Extended repairs. Oh, no, that's the city table. I'm always confusing those two. 62. Swan smashes leading edge. Effect. Crash. Crash? This is bad. Okay, I have to look up the rules for crash. Hope we can survive. It says, you've lost control of the aeroplane and landed hard. You can't take off again and you must arrange to recover your aeroplane which is always to the city you took off from. This costs a thousand pounds and seven days. And you use half the fuel of the stage. So we did not make it to Karachi. We're back in Djibouti. And then it's going to cost us a thousand pounds. And in addition to that, we have to pay a repair cost of 500. And we have a permanent damage to our fuel by two. So now we can really only have six. That's really not good. Okay. That's our flight result. Let's see what happens in our city again. 24. Local interest. Free repairs to damage from last leg. So we don't have to pay the 500, but we still do have to pay the 1,000. And that is going to be an additional um, seven days. Have I been adding up my days here? Should have been three... Four, five. Now we should be on five. Plus seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one for the stopover. We have 2,050 pounds. We only spent three units of fuel because we crashed. So we have five. Our fortitude is the same. And let's refuel. So we have 1,900 pounds. Ooh, no, we can only refill by one that's right because our fuel is damaged again so we have two thousand pounds but we only have six fuel and we can make it to karachi hopefully hopefully as long as nothing too bad happens here so we start with our fortitude of eight two thousand pounds and it's going to be six stage flight Okay, can we make it to Karachi? Let's see. 45. Wing spar snaps. Wing folds up. Unless your wings are three, then written off. So, okay. Let's see, what are my wings? My wings. Nope, my wings are bad. They were the cheapest ones. I should not have done that. We have a, another permanent damage to our fuel tank, which is minus three. So 
we're going to only have a maximum of three fuel. And now our plane is written off, so that means that our our plane is broken. Let's see how we deal with that. Um, so our plane is written off. It says your aeroplane is damaged beyond repair. Your flight ends, but the crew makes it to the city you were trying to reach, although without the aeroplane. So we did at least make it to Karachi. If you have the finance to continue the flight, there's a chance that your destination city council might provide a substitute aeroplane to help you complete the flight. If they do, they'll cover your accommodation costs while you're waiting for it to arrive, because they really want to promote the idea of being a flight destination. So if your airplane is written off, roll 1d6. If the number's odd, you receive another airplane. That's good. But you lose seven days before it arrives, and it has not the best stats. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And our new aeroplane has a... I guess we should um, do the, the city encounter too first. 55. Robbers hold you up overnight, lose a thousand pounds. Okay. <laughs> so, alright, so we lost a thousand pounds. And our new plane. So it has a fuel tank of four. Uh, a fortitude bonus of plus one, so that would mean we now have a fortitude of five. And that, I believe, is where we end, because there's really no way I'm going to be able to make it to my destination um, without extreme luck, and I think that the threat of crashing and burning in the middle of the ocean would be very bad. Um, you can't die in this game, necessarily. Uh, which I guess is good, but also super unrealistic because I imagine a lot of pilots at this time did crash into the sea and were never seen again. Um, but with a fuel of only four, I mean, we would need at least six to get to Calcutta, so we would need to take two to get to Agra, and then another two to get to Calcutta. And we're just not going to be able to make it, I don't think. There's, there's too many, um, too many very difficult legs here. And with only a thousand pounds left, we're not going to be able to keep refueling our plane. So I believe that is where we end here. Hopefully I can get a flight back to London. Although, of course, I will not be flying. So that was Route Finder uh, Transcontinental. What are my thoughts on this game? So as usual, we are going to start with the build. So this game really doesn't take very much to build. You just need the map and the tables and the score sheet. You don't need to laminate them and make them fancy like I did, but I did it to make it easier to write on and mark off my potential patrons and uh, remember what parts I bought for my airplane. The look of this game is, it's nice, it's clean, it's simple, um, it's nothing too fancy. There are some really nice kind of pencil style drawings in the manual, however, which I find delightful. So what did I like about this game? Well, I like that this game tells a story. I, I like that from the beginning you can kind of sort of imagine uh, what kind of person your pilot is based on the kind of patrons that are going to support him or her. Uh, I, I like the choices there with deciding who you want to fly your plane for. And I also really like the story that emerges as you play this game. Now, the gameplay is relatively simple, but a lot of very colorful things can happen to your pilot. Um, there's a lot of breakdowns, uh, crashes, engine failure, uh, all kinds of things that can go wrong. I like that you can make some pretty interesting decisions from the beginning about whether you would rather invest heavily in having the best plane possible, or whether you would like to have a little nest egg to be there to pay for repairs and whatnot. Choosing your route is also very interesting, and trying to figure out just how far you can push yourself and your plane in order to get to your destination as quickly as possible. And that is another plus. Um, you can try to beat your high score, which is always a good thing. If you've already beaten this game, you can try it again and see if you can do the route faster, or with less damage, or cheaper. So what didn't I like about this game? So this game is a little bit like an air travel version of Oregon Trail. Uh, you get to make some decisions from the beginning, but a lot of the stuff that happens to you is kind of random. 
Just like how your family can develop dysentery randomly while you're on the Oregon Trail, your plane can just randomly crash or have horrible things happen to it and there's very little that you can do. You are really at the mercy of the elements and the rickety machinery that you are operating. So though there are some pretty interesting decisions to make about when to refuel, when to stop, when to rest, how far to push yourself, and of course which route you want to take, a lot of this game is going to be luck. You can do everything completely right and your journey will still end in disaster. Speaking of ending in disaster, I, I wasn't really sure that I liked that your pilot cannot die in this game. That no matter how many times your plane crashes, you can still get up and try again. And at some point you might give up if your plane is too damaged or if the replacement plane that you have isn't very good. This game is all about the risks of early aircraft operation, and I would think that it wouldn't be much of a stretch to have maybe a situation where the pilot does not survive. Maybe you have to roll a d6 when you uh, crash your airplane and you can have a modifier based on what your fortitude is. Maybe the designer thought this was too dark, but it, it does seem a little bit weird that no matter what, you will survive your crashes. So what is my final verdict on this game? Well. I would say I liked it. It's pretty simplistic and it's not very difficult to learn. I don't really see myself coming back to this game too often, but I liked the little stories that it spun me while I did play it. I never did successfully make it to Melbourne, so it's a hard game for me and that is a good thing. Seeing as how this game requires no assembly, you just need to print out the map and some tables, I think that your bang for buck for this PNP is very good. So if you're into the theme and you like the kind of story this game tells and you are okay with things going catastrophically wrong sometimes, try it out. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already and if you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon. You can also check out the Facebook group for everything solo gaming. So until next time, my friends, happy adventuring.